I may have good news and even better news about RS485. Good news is with the help of uh, a couple of people who've contacted me, really, the JTAG who sent um, a comment on the last video I posted where I pretty much gave up on it all, and Jeff from Jumble Lane who sent me an email. Um, I've got to the point where it works. Um, the even better news, therefore, is hopefully I will never mention it again in any videos that I make because I'm hoping now it'll just sit there and work and I can forget about it. There were a couple of things. Um, I might as well try and go through the things. Frustratingly, I don't actually know what, what I did to fix it because I tried three or four things at the same time and <laughs> one of them worked. So the first and the obvious thing is this is the uh, USB adapter, that uh, black cable there goes off to the Raspberry Pi. So this is the master effectively. And this particular type of adapter, you can get types that have just got the A and B connectors that would connect that pink and purple cable there, which are the RS-485 bus wires. But you can also get ones that have a five volt output because they're connected via USB I guess. Now I did try using the 5 volt output to power all of the uh, the, the TTL modules but that didn't work for one reason or another. Well, it might now I guess. Um, but what I have done is I've come back and there are two ground connectors on that uh, wire so I've on the adapter so I've plugged a ground bus cable into it which uh, means that the Raspberry Pi as well as everything else, all the Arduinos will have now that common ground. And whereas I, although I, when I first connected the, the common ground up to everything, it really didn't work. I think that was due to other issues, which I'll go through. Um, but the important thing for now is the there's a common ground coming out of this adapter and it connects everything else up. And down at the very messy Arduinos, what I've got is the grey cable up at the top, you can see it, that's the, the common uh, ground bus wire that's coming through. It, there's a connector comes off it, this white cable, and it goes into the ground, there, uh, the ground connector on the Arduino sensor hat. Really the reason I did that was my usual laziness, because the Arduino is connected to the PWM driver board, which is that little one up there. Uh, that has a uh, five volt and ground connection, and uh, therefore, and the TTL module is powered from that PCA nine six eight five board. So, as long as I plug the common ground into something that's on this this little hub here, that's all connecting, talking to each other, then uh, that's fine. So the easiest way, the easiest entry point for this common ground was here. Um, so that's where it got plugged in. Once I got the common ground connected up, um, everything kind of went from patchy to bad. So I decided to persevere with it because um, by this time, the way people had explained it to me, I kind of realized that common ground really was needed. So I think what happened was adding the common ground into the network actually exposed underlying issues that somehow hadn't been exposed too badly before. And I, I think that the two main things that I tried that I think had an impact in the end were the CMRI module and JMRI expects a kind of very outdated old um, method of serial communication to come from the Arduinos and that has to be specified in the sketch when the serial bus starts and I wasn't doing that. It is documented on the Auto485 website on the, the GitHub page but I've missed it so I added um, a specification of the serial communication type when starting the serial bus. Um, so that was the first thing I did. The second was I, I sort of realised, because I'd been changing these sketches a lot, and, and the sketches I use now are pretty much ones that I wrote myself. They do quite a few things, and they were a bit buggy, so I had a lot of debug output that was going to the serial console. And I think that was interfering with the serial communication on the RS-485 network. I could see because on the debug, once I'd got the sensors added to the, the RS-485, uh, to the Arduinos, um, I could see that there was a lot more chatter coming from CMRI. As soon as it's aware that there are sensors on a node, it pulls that node constantly and, and asks for a reply so that it can find out what the state of the sensors are. And once it started doing that, on my console output on the laptop i could see all this interfere just artifacts just nonsense being output all the time which kind of meant that the rs485 
information was interfering with my serial output. So I think it was a fair assumption to make that my serial output would also have been interfering with the RS-485 communication. So whereas every now and again, I do still need to debug stuff because I write dodgy code that needs to be debugged and fixed. Once it's fixed and once I'm sure it's working, I make sure what I do is go back in and comment out all of the serial dot print line lines so that there is no output going to the serial other than RS-485. And I may have got to the bottom of the reason for all these burnt out TTL modules. Something I've been worried about right from the start really is when you switch an Arduino on it immediately starts running its sketch, its instructions, it doesn't really start up, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have a start up time, it just starts doing what it's doing. And so I could switch the Arduinos and all of the power on around the, 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 the layout but it would be maybe 30 seconds to a minute before the Raspberry Pi had started up, started running JMRI, JMRI had started running CMRI and the RS-485 bus had started up. In all that time there's no master on the RS-485 network because that's coming from the USB thing so all of these TTL modules that are around the layout are sat trying to operate and possibly trying to send data but with no master so they could all be sending data at the same time which can lead to collisions which can lead to overheating according to the documentation I wrote so in the end I found a really quite simple way and I'll, I'll um, up post the updated links to the code of making sure that the Arduinos don't start up the CMRI processing until CMRI is available so now when they start up the Arduinos sit there looking for CMRI and looking for the RS-485 bus and if they don't find it they stay in the setup section of the sketch and it's not until they detect that CMRI has started up um, and then a two second delay that they then um, start processing CMRI and since I did that I've had no further uh, fried TTL modules. So hopefully that, now that's all working and fixed um, I can move on and, and never mention it again, which would be uh, um, <laughs> a positive. Um, a side effect of it, because I was having all those, those problems with the communication, I did go around and wire up micro switches that act as feedback sensors on all of the turnouts. Um, I've only got these four to go now, and then every every turnout will, will have a feedback sensor, which is arguably not strictly necessary because um, if everything's working properly, JMRI can be confident that because it sent an instruction to turn the turnout, that turnout moved and therefore it doesn't need feedback from it. But I've got this far now, so I might as well wire them up. It does add a few extra layers of uh, um, insurance, if you like, anyway. So I'll, I'll carry on with them. So this is underneath. This here is the lower deck base board and then the gap here to the upper deck one. I can't see it, but if I hold the camera up through that gap there may well be a view of the storage lines that are underneath the the upper deck but for me this is really quite useful although they're higher I still can have, I still do have very relatively easy access to the to the, the point mortars and they have these um, two cables coming down from the micro switches so all I need to do when I'm down here is get these two cables connected to a chop block um, and then run two long cables down to the Arduino which is over in that direction that's unfortunately that's not the board they need to be on that's the extended P uh, PW on driver board the Arduino is further away in the distance that might just be visible through all the spaghetti. And some useful, or thing, some things I've found useful. Um, first of all, continuing to fit these um, boards that were intended as shelves really under the layout for storage that you can see this stuff uh, when when things are normal, there's boxes and all kinds of things shoved under them to keep them out of the way. But when I need to be as far under the layout as I just was, they're extremely useful because it means 
th this is this is where the the actual floorboards finish and it, it it was before i had them it was a horrible lean i ended up with a kind of plank of wood screwed to those two beams there but by the time i got that far back because there was nowhere i could put my bottom my, my my shoulder was kind of at that level and it was extremely uncomfortable and, and impractical so having those boards there is just so useful so, so i can get comfortably right to the back of the layout underneath and also this this light this floodlight I bought it uh, when I first started doing the loft because there was no light, no electrics up here. But it's actually very useful. It's got quite a long cable. I don't think it was expensive, but it's useful to, to get under the layout and and, uh, and and lighting everything up when I'm I'm under there because obviously otherwise the, the baseboards kind of block out the, the majority of the light. Also, my two extension cables, one for ground, one for signal coming from the micro switch, pulled through to the Arduino, it's just a case of crimping DuPont connectors onto the ends of the cable and then plugging them into the sensor board on the Arduino. I do obviously realise and acknowledge that this cabling is terrible. Um, I think I've got here because I've been prototyping essentially, I've, I've never done any of this before and so everything I do when I do it for the first time I'm kind of trying it to see if it works and it's always been quite difficult to um, I guess do everything, do do a job neatly when I don't actually know if that job's going to work or not, you know, if it, if the end product's going to work. So I've tended to just pull a cable, plug it in, see if it works, and then if it has, leave it. So at some point, with, with especially with the three Arduino areas, I realise I'm, I'm going to have to come and do some uh, sorting out in these corners. And over to JMRI, um, I now just need to get these sensors added and connected uh, or the respective turnouts configured to use them so for the first two and back to GMRI I just now need to get the sensors added uh, into GMRI and then get the respective turnouts configured to use them as feedback sensors so for the first two micro switches that I need to add as sensors they are on the same board as the Arduino and the Arduino is configured to use them which means they should be on the same ID as their respective sets of points so that looks like it's going to be 1001, 1002 because they're the first two turnouts on the first board on node 1 so they should be feeding back already so the idea would really be that all I need to do is add something at 1001, call it micro switch incline top one, create, and it should, right, it's, we're getting something anyway, so it's getting some kind of uh, feedback from it. Um, it might need reversing and I'll need to make sure that, uh, well, what I can do actually is while, if that's active, and I think I did align the micro switch to the servo arm so it should be uh, moving so that's that one up there isn't it so if I switch no it's not it's this one down here if I switch this that sensor value should change oh it has that's good so switch is uh, aligned and it's feeding back through the Arduino so let's try the second one This will be 1002 and incline top two. Try the same thing again, they should both move this time. This is a like a double turnout configuration here, so it's like a crossover. That's good, but uh, it seems like they're both, um, because when this goes red, that means it's open, and when it's black, it means it's closed. So they both need to be inverted, I think. So that they're now inactive when the crossover is closed, and active when it's open. So 
all I need to do now is go and find my two turnouts, which are these two. I had one sensor feedback, sensor incline top one, and use my custom setting that's no good anyway. Same, that should stay thrown because obviously the sensor is showing active. This one too, exactly the same. Top two. That should stay thrown too. But there now should be a delay in the feedback coming back here. There should be just a slight. Yeah, that's good. There's like maybe like a half second delay while everything syncs up while this one which doesn't have feedback sensors the response is immediate because this is just GMRI saying well I sent the message to go active I have no feedback on it therefore it just is active so the the visual state on here changes straight away whereas on this one it's sending the message and, but it's waiting for the feedback to come back uh, on, on the sensor. So there's a, an obvious delay there while that all syncs up and happens. It's probably worth mentioning here, there is one distinct advantage that I haven't mentioned yet to using feedback sensors. And that is so that JMRI knows the state of the layout, knows the state of every turnout when the layout starts up because the action of setting a set of points or the connection between JMRI and a set of points and the point water is very much a one-way thing. It's a one-way communication. So JMRI can send out an instruction, it can go through RS485, RS485, it can go through the Arduino, it can go through the PCA9685 driver board and it can go to the motor and the motor can receive the instruction and it can add, act upon it but that's a one-way thing. There's no way of the Arduino or GMRI asking the motor what position it's in. So without feedback sensors, when you start up a layout, all these sets of points, GMRI has no idea what position they're in until it has set them at least once. And when I started up, when I only had the incline line running, I had a, um, a route uh, to set everything to closed um, but that was just for the incline line and it's too much really looking at all of these sets of points here it's a bit too much to have uh, I mean it's possible but it's a, a, a bit overkill to have a route set to set every single set of points on the layout I mean at the minute I've got 30 of them I think and there'll be more in the future so it's a little bit <laughs> it's annoying noise apart from anything else but with feedback sensors set these little switches underneath here probably can't really see any of them clearly but with a, a switch on each of the turnouts that's what and they start sending their status back as soon as JMRI starts up and the Arduino start up so that allows JMRI I've just started up the um, the, the layout now and I haven't done anything and down here on on the points whereas previously I think it's it's been visible on previous videos all of those sets of points have been set to a status of unknown they're now set to uh, their correct status because as soon as everything started up the micro switches started talking to JMRI and JMRI learned what the status of all those sets of points was without having to uh, send an instruction to them um, one other thing that's probably notable and worthy of mention is I've updated the Arduino script. Now that there is a, a micro switch on all of these, and it's not the same for every single set of points, um, but for the vast majority, because each of these motors now has a micro switch on it, the sketch is using the status of those micro switches to set the relay for the uh, frog polarity. So it doesn't it, it has a fallback of reacting to instructions from JMRI to set the frog polarity, but by default, wherever it can, it just simply goes by the, the position of that switch. Um, so effectively now these micro switches, these single micro switches are kind of doing, in a roundabout kind of way, 
one micro switch is doing the job of two because without JMRI and, and all of the logic, you'd have one micro switch, say the one that's over the, the far side there, you'd have one micro switch which um, is connected to the track power and the frog. And I, I think I did this on the first couple of micro, uh, first couple of motors that I put up. I had the two micro switches on, and I'll, I'll link to a video. The first one. Uh, had three connections on it, uh, track red, track black and green for the frog and pressing or releasing the switch on the micro switch swim simply switched uh, the polarity of the frog because uh, with it with it pressed then the red cable would be connected to the green one and with it released the black one would be connected to the green one so that that was a very um, manual way of setting frog polarity and then the other uh, micro switch on there would be for a feedback sensor and that would be connected through the feedback uh, um, in, into the Arduino but because the Arduino is connected to the relay as well then I can just have one more micro switch doing two jobs because the Arduino sketch says right I've detected that the status of this micro switch has, has changed therefore I will inform JMRI of the change but I will also send a message to the relay to change the polarity Back at JMRI, I've just had um, an issue with JMRI wouldn't load, he gave me an error message. I think I've got a screenshot of it, so I'll try and superimpose it over the video somehow if this makes it in. Um, it gave me a, yeah, a really strange error message, and it took me a while to work out. It was an error loading the XML, which I'll open here. Um, and I've now worked out what, well, the, the, the lesson... Um, learned is don't rename your sensors once they're associated with a turnout as a feedback sensor. Um, it seems a bit silly to me but if I go down and find the turnouts here in the XML file that um, saves all your settings in JMRI if a when you add a feedback sensor when it associates it here, it associates the name of the sensor rather than the ID. All these sensors have IDs like C, whatever it is, CS1006, and they, they, you know, I, I set them. But the good thing about an ID is it gets set when you create the thing and you can't change it, whereas you can change names. And actually, I, I, I renamed a sensor accidentally because I added another sensor with the same ID as one that already existed accidentally. And rather than tell me um, that I've already got a sensor with that ID and I shouldn't really add another one, it instead just renamed the existing sensor with the name that I'd given the new one. So I went in and I, and I renamed it back. I think I was filming it, I can't remember, but it, 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 and it may or may not end up in this. Um, so I went back and I renamed it back to its original value, but I missed a space out somewhere and I just gave it a slightly different name. So what that meant was when it was when GMRI was loading and it was trying to load a turnout and look for a sensor with this name, couldn't find it because I'd renamed it, renamed it back, and it didn't quite have the same name. So the whole of, of the, the file wouldn't load, it wouldn't load my, my turnouts or anything. Obviously if GMRI were to link here to a, a, an ID which can't change, that would stop that error happening. But also if they were to, uh, like I said, if, you, if I try and add a a sensor with an ID that already exists, maybe just give me an error and say you're probably making a mistake there rather than rename the existing one. Um, but yeah, the big lesson is uh, um, I need to make sure I avoid renaming any sensors that are used for feedback once they're associated with the turnout. So in true time-honoured tradition, I think, for me and, <laughs> and layouts, I was just kind of getting to a point where I thought I was getting to the end of the micro-switch work and then um, I encountered a really quite interesting problem, I think. The two um, uh, turnouts up there that the Class 43 is just going over now, they were the penultimate two that I needed to add, really because they were the longest cables and I just left the hardest ones to last. Once I got the cables pulled and plugged into the Arduino, I was getting a lot of electrical interference on, on both of the sensors. And um, it was very obvious because the way I've got the sketch written is if, if it detects that there's a feedback sensor attached to a turnout, 
it uses the state of that micro switch to determine the polarity of the frog and to set the relay. And because I was getting interference, so zeros were flickering into ones and ones were flickering into zeros, the relay was clicking on and off all the time because the Arduino was detecting a, a temporary change in state and it was, it was flicking the, the relay and that got quite annoying. So initially I started looking into why there was such electrical interference and just on those two cables when everything else was alright. And it could be the length, it could have been the length, but I think it might not have been. And I, I think I, I separated the cables out completely from all of the wire. Oh, and, and it was much worse, or in fact it was only evident when the track power was on. So track power was off, no interference, track power on, loads of interference. So I tried to separate the cables out and run them away from the track bus and that made no difference even with them you know, not touching any of the track bus cables at all and they're shielded anyway, there was, there was no issue. So the theory that I think I've come to actually in the end is those two turnouts and the micro switches are mounted underneath this board here. And that effectively means they're right next to this bit of track that runs right down the edge of that board. And the micro switch, its, it's um, uh, connections are exposed and, and also the little bit of uh, cable is exposed that solders onto the switches. And I'm just wondering, you know, I'm, I'm taking all this care to keep all of the shielded cable up separate. Of course, the, the, there's a whole load of unshielded stuff, track and, and, and micro switch connectors, that are completely unshielded and right next to each other. So I think if there's any going to be any cause for that interference, it's probably going to be that. And I'm not sure there's much I can do about it. I mean, maybe get some heat shrink, that kind of thing, see if that'll make any difference. But they're already mounted and they're already sold and I really don't want to be pulling them down. So, temporarily, well, I, really I thought I had two choices. First of all, now rs 485s working okay, there really wasn't any, there, there's much less need for feedback sensors to start with because JMR I can trust that it sent um, an instruction to a turnout to change and that turnout changed and therefore that's called direct feedback, which means, you know, it's changed because I told it to change rather than it's changed because I told it to change and I waited to see if it had changed. So that's definitely one option. But the other option is actually the sketches had two ways of setting relay, um, setting the relays for fog polarity because I wrote them before I did all of my cross switches, therefore there had to be another way. And the other way is that it waits for instructions from JMRI. So if JMRI sends an instruction to, set, to change a set of points, then as well as setting the motor value, it also sets the relay, which is the original way of doing it. And because that's less direct and it's got um, uh, debounce settings, you know, the message goes to JMRI, which has debounce and then gets sent back to, uh, to, the, the, um, to the Arduino, that's actually a lot less volatile and I'm not getting the relay switching using that method. So I still have those feedback sensors working and they're still acting as feedback sensors to JMRI. I'm just setting the... the um, the frog slightly differently and that seems to have worked well. The other really weird issue I had, and I can't get to the bottom of that, is um, every now and again that the uh, one of the Arduinos, when I switch it on, its sensor values that it gets sent to JMRI as JMRI sees them are all the inverse of what they were last time I had the layout on. And this has happened two or three times now, so it, it, it manifests itself because every single set of points, the status of every single set of points in JMRI for that corner that the Arduino's in, is wrong, which is really weird. And I, uh, the sketch hasn't changed, so it's not like I've introduced a bug, and I've done nothing in JMRI, and I'm pretty sure I've saved the JMRI settings last time I, I changed them, but every single one is the opposite of what it should be. I don't know if I'm knocking something on the Arduino and I'm working on or anything like that. And it's fixed simply by going and changing the inverted status of each of those sensors and then everything's all right. But I have no idea why it's happening. Um, so that one's still to be investigated. But anyway, now the micro switches are done, I'm on to, uh, I need to drill all the holes underneath these storage lines here to get the infrared sensors out because that in, because that'll be positional um, sensing just hit my elbow on a train. Um, that'll do the positional sensing so that JMRI will know what's in and I'll know what's in each um, each yard line and how much space there is. Then get a few um, current, detect, current detector blocks in for the rest of the, the two uh, loops. And once that's done, I've bought some signals, so it's time to get signals, working signals in, uh, based obviously on block occupation and turnout status, 
um, before then moving on to, to uh, automation. I, I don't know, with, with, with these yard lines here, I, I don't really know enough about real railways to know, but I'd, I'd assume that yard lines like this don't have signals at the end of them um, because it's meant to be storage and it's off the main layout. And I don't want to go over the top with signals, I only really want to put them where they need to be. So I'm, I'm working on the assumption that, that yard lines like this wouldn't have lots of uh, lights that determined whether a train could leave the yard line, but I stand to be corrected on that. Um, so I'll leave it here because again I'm, I'm going on to lots more boring cabling and wiring for all the sensors I think that there are about 27 infrared sensors I'll need to drill through these lines here um, so yeah that's my next job <laughs>